Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at Section 351 transaction. This topic is covered in a corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. This is an introduction to this topic. I'm going to have multiple recording explaining the topic a little bit in details, but it's very important that you understand the overall picture. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. So if you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should have a LinkedIn account. It's important to network with other professionals and to grow to grow your career. If you, if you are a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page and feel free to connect with me on a personal level. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. YouTube is where I house all my lectures, all my accounting lectures. I do have a Twitter account and I do have a website. On my website, I always have some sort of an offer so right now Becker is running an unlimited access offer through their uh, for their CPA course so if you go to my website click on the link and you will get that special and you'll have an unlimited access for the gold standard CPA preparation course so let's talk about section 351 transaction so what is the big picture it's very important to understand the big picture well the big picture is this we have shareholders or investors they would like to start their own companies or they would like to invest in other companies and other corporations so what they would do they will transfer money if they have money or sometimes they might transfer property and they transfer this property to the corporation in return the corporation will give them stocks stocks of the company corporation and the individuals they become shareholders they become owners of the company now what is that what does that mean well if you contribute cash it's not an issue because if you think about it the basis for the cash equal to the market value simply put if you contributed one hundred dollars to the corporation you would you're supposed to receive one hundred dollars worth of stock so it's not a big deal the question becomes what happened if you contribute property let's assume you have a piece of property with a basis of ten thousand and fair market value equal to fifteen thousand now you contribute this you contributed this property to the corporation so basically you dispose of it well when you dispose of a property what do we have to do we have to compute the realized gain or loss so let's go ahead and do so so we have to look at the fair market value of the asset received the fair less the adjusted basis of the property transferred so what happened is you gave them a property with the basis of ten thousand but it has a value of 15,000. So obviously they're going to give you value of 15,000. So th they gave you a value because you dispose of this property. So from the asset disposition formula, you have a gain of 5,000. Well, what's going to happen is this, because you transfer this property to the corporation, as long as you meet certain rules, which we're going to talk about later, which is as long as you are in control of this corporation, What's going to happen is this is where section 351 kicks in and this transaction is not taxable. Simply put, this $5,000 is not taxable under section 351, assuming you meet certain requirements, which we're going to see what those, those requirements are. Now, the question is why? The question is you have to understand why would the government allow you to transfer this property? Let me just make sure. I make I make at least I make one rule is clear when this trans when this transaction happen the shareholder or the shareholders and that transaction they have to control this is important to mention here 80 percent of the corporation so after the transfer after this transfer the shareholder or the shareholders it could be more than one shareholder they could all meet up together and do the contribution altogether as long as they control 80% or more of the corporation, this is where section 351 kicks in. I just want to make sure we understand there are certain conditions. Okay. Now, what's the reason? Why do they allow you to have a tax-free transfer, basically tax-free transfer? The first reason is based on this doctrine that's that's called the Woodwethel to pay doctrine. What does that mean? It means you receive, you transferred property and you receive stocks. Now, guess what? You cannot pay the IRS with the stocks. Simply put, you don't have the cash to pay it. So therefore, it should not be taxable because if you did not receive cash, the IRS does not is not interested in the stocks. That's one thing. You cannot, you know, mail them the stock. They, they, they're interested in cash. 
Two, it's a continuation of your investment. So simply put, you have a property, now you transfer the property into the corporation, the corporation gave you stocks, you still own that property via the corporation. So it's a continuation of the investment doctrine, and it's technically what we call substance over form. What does that mean? Yes, you did transfer the property, yes, but you still own it. It has just it has a new owner, the corporation is the owner, but remember, if you are in control of the corporation, you are still in substance the owner of that property okay and also congress wants to encourage businesses to form corporation so what do they do they give you tax incentive they say when you create when you form a property and you contribute when you form sorry a corporation and you contribute property as long as you control 80 percent of that corporation the transfer is tax free so those are the reasons let's take a look at another quick example let's assume ron incorporate his his sole proprietorship he contributed cash the basis is it 10,000 and the fair market value is 10,000? And this is very important to understand. If you contributed $10,000 cash, $10,000 cash equal to $10,000 cash. Now, Ron also contributed furniture and fixture, 20,000 of, um, uh, with a, um, a basis of 20,000 of uh, furniture and fixture, had a fair market value of 60. Here, technically, what you have here is you have a gain of 40,000. Also, Ron contributed land and building. Basis of 240, fair market value of 300,000, which is which is we have a gain of 60. So all in all, we have a gain of 100,000. Guess what? Without section 351, Ron, let's assume Ron does not qualify under section 351. So Ron transferred this, but Ron did not have 80% control, therefore does not qualify for section 351. Ron will have to pay $100,000 and they have to pay taxes on the $100,000 of gain. Well, with Section 351, no gain and loss. Ron's economic status has not changed. So if Ron transferred those property and Ron is in control of the corporation, whether it's a gain or a loss, it's not, it, it's not recognized. Okay, so let's take a look more at the definition of Section 351, just to make sure we, we cover our basis because I, I simplify it just to give you the big picture, but let's take a look at the definition. So what is the definition well the definition of section 351 is the transfer of property now we have to define property to a corporation solely for the reason and in, in exchange for stocks we have to also make sure we understand what do we mean by stock where 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 the transfer or the transferers which could be more than one is or are in control and kind of we define control 80 percent of the corporation immediately after the transfer simply put you transfer property property, land, building, equipment, to the corporation. In exchange, the corporation gave you stock of the corporation itself. And after this transaction, the people that made that transfer immediately control 80% of the corporation. Now, you have to keep in mind, they don't have to make it all simultaneously at the same day. As long as it's within, within a close period of time and they kind of agree that that's a, that's a prearranged transaction altogether, then it fits the definition. So it doesn't have to be one person. It could be multiple person, but it, it's taken as a transaction. Okay, so what do we mean by property? So the first thing is what's property? Property has a broad definition. Property would include everything and but specifically exclude services. And we're going to be talking about services much, much more. What happened if you contributed services rather than property? So the property would include cash, which is easy. Cash basis and market value equal the same. It could include land, building, equipment, uh, secret processes and formulas, installment obligation. Anything you can contribute to the company is property, but you cannot contribute your services. If you do, it doesn't fit under the definition of 351, which we'll talk about much, much more about services. We'll have a, we'll have a whole recording about that topic. So the code specifically excludes services from the definition of property. And we will discuss much more in details later on. So what happened if you contribute services, just to kind of, kind of, kind of plan the seat for services? Well, if you contribute services, what does that mean if you contribute services? Simply put, you don't have money. Okay, you're one of those owners. You have, yeah, let's see, one, two, three. We have three individuals. This person has a lot of money, this person has a lot of money, and this person has some sort of a skill. This person is a CPA, is an accountant. Okay, so what happened is those two individuals contributed money to the, uh, contributed property to the corporation. So they contributed, and in return, they received stocks. In return, they, they become owners. Now they wanted they wanted this individual who is a CPA and very skilled, and they want him they want him or her to join the corporation. Now this individual said, "I don't have money, but 
here's what I would do. I would work one year for free for you if you give me stocks. I'm willing to do that. Okay. So what happened is this. So this individual contributes services, okay, which is his or her time. In return, they receive stocks. So what happened here? Well, guess what? Services is not included in the uh, in the Section 351 transaction. So service is not considered a property. So what's going to happen? This individual basically earned the money. Well, guess what? If you earn the money, it's ordinary income. So let's assume they work for $60,000. That's the fair market value of the services. Guess what? You can you earned sixty thousand dollar of cash, as if you earned it. Then you take took the cash and invested back in the company. So basically, simply put, services is your effort. You received income for your effort. Therefore, it's taxable. Okay. So uh, shareholder has ordinary income equal to the fair market value of services transfer. So if they work sixty thousand dollar worth of services, they do. Okay. So A transfer services to Corporation C. In return, receive stocks from the corporation. If the fair market value of the stock received is ten thousand, then guess what? This individual has an ordinary income of ten thousand. If you work for the company and they give you ten thousand worth of stocks, you earned that ten thousand dollar. If you earned something, you have ordinary income. Ordinary income is taxable. Ordinary income is taxable. So specifically, what we say is services is excluded from the definition. Now, what should you receive in return? Well, you must receive stocks. Remember, we said you transfer property and you receive stocks. Now, specifically, you'd receive the stock of the company, not stocks of other company. Okay. Now, the type of the stocks, common or preferred, we're not going to get into it. But generally speaking, common and most preferred stock are considered uh, are considered preferred. Now, if you received anything other than the company stock, it's considered a boot. And hopefully, you remember what a boot is from the like kind exchange when we did the. Um, like kind exchanges. So if you receive anything other than stocks of the company, you might receive cash. You might receive the stocks of other company. You might receive property. We need to talk about this later on. But boot, for our purposes, only flow from the corporation to the individual. So, so remember, remember this picture here. The shareholder, the shareholder transfer property to the corporation and the corporation will transfer stocks back. Now the corporation could also transfer boot other than stock. So we only call it boot when the corporation transfer back. So this is a boot. This is not a boot. So the shareholder, when they transfer to the corporation, they could transfer property. We don't call this a boot. So this is a boot. I'm going to exit out. The boot for section 351 is a one way transaction from the corporation back to the shareholder. So it's only one way. The boot is considered one way. So make sure you understand this and hopefully you do understand this because you're going to be transferring property. You cannot call that transfer a boot. Okay. So it's only one way only. It's not like kind exchange where the boot can boot can flow in either way. And remember control, you have to control 80%. So the definition of control, you have to be in control of 80%. In contrast, if you remember from a financial accounting, from a gap perspective, you earn, you meet control when you go 50% plus. But this is not GAP, this is IRS. For the IRS to be considered you're in control, you have to own 80% of the company. Okay, so let's take a look at a few examples just to see when does Section 351 applies because it's very important. Okay, so we'll start with this example uh, about two individuals. A, transfer property to the corporation, in return received 7,000 shares of stocks. Currently, A owns 7,000 shares. B is another owner did not did not did not did not contribute property did not contribute any services but b currently own 3000 shares so now a joined b and now together they own they own together they own 10000 shares so what's the ownership of a the ownership of a is 70% the ownership of b is 30% so the question is this does this transaction qualify for section 351 simply put a contribute the property we don't know what the property is they contribute property let's assume there is a gain on that property with a b can a exclude the gain that's the question and the answer is no well why because after the after the contribution of a after the contribution of a b, b did not contribute anything now it's only per transaction after the contribution of a a only controls 70%. 70% does not give you control for the purpose of Section 351. Okay, therefore, 
whatever A contributed, if A has a gain on that asset, on that property, they'll have to pay taxes. So remember, Section 351 applies per transaction. So this is the transaction happens to be only A in this example. A transfer of property and receive 7,000 shares, A owns 70%, which is less than 80. Section 351 does not apply. Thus, he must recognize any gain or loss for that purpose. Let's look at another example. We have two individuals, A and B. A contributed property, B contributed property. So they, they're, they're going into the transaction together. They did not contribute any services. We'll talk about services later. A received 2,000 shares, B received 2,000 shares. So A in total now own 2,000 shares, B in total owns uh, B uh, 2,000 shares as well. So together they own 4,000 shares. That's 50% ownership for each. With section 351 applies in this scenario, each one of them owns 50%. I hope you got it. In this situation, section 351 applies and the answer is yes. Remember what I said? I said they both contributed the, the property together because they both contributed together. It doesn't have to be one, one individual. It's per transaction. It could be many individuals. As long as they are together, applies per transaction. So together, they own more than 80%. Therefore, Section 351 applies. So if they have a gain or a loss, if A has a gain or a loss, it will, be, it will not be recognized. B, same thing. Okay? So Section 351, remember, applies per transaction. In one transaction, A and B both transfer and each receive 2,000 shares, although each one of them owns only 80% and, and together they own 100%. Okay? Now, let me change the example just a little bit to kind of tell you where it doesn't apply. Let's assume B owned the, two, the 2,000 shares prior. So, so here's what happened. B already owned this, let's just make it five years ago. So five years ago, B owns those shares. Well, five years ago, B owns those shares, and A came in and contributed another 2,000 shares. Then guess what? Those 2,000 shares for A, the value, whatever the property, if there's any gain, it will be taxable. But what we said here is they did it together. So they A contributed and B contributed at the same time. Okay, let's take a look at this transaction. We have a year later, we have A individual and B individual. A contributed property. B did not contribute property, so A only contributing. Did not contribute, both, neither contributed services. The stock received today is 4,000 after this transaction, and in total, A now owns 6,000 shares. As of today, B owns 2,000 shares. So let's take a look at this. Between A and B, we have 8,000 shares, and A, 6,000 divided by 8,000, owns 75%, and B owns the remainder. 25%. With this transaction, would A qualify for Section 351 transaction? And the answer is yeah. no, because A, basically, the, transa the Section 351 applies per transaction, and after this transaction, A is not in control of the corporation. Well, he, he did increase his ownership from 4,000 um, uh, from 2,000 to 6,000 because he added 4,000 shares. Remember, stock received 4,000. Nevertheless, that did not give A a control of the corporation because now owns 75 out of 75%. Um, okay, so what happened here is Section 351 does not apply. A transfer, A transferred property and received 4,000 shares. After the transaction, he accumulates 6,000 shares, which is 75% of the total stock, and it's less than 80%. Let's take a look at another year later. Another year later, A contributed property, B did not contribute anything, neither of them contributes, contributed services, A received as a result 2,000 new shares. Just 2,000 new shares gave A 8,000 total, and B still owns 2,000 of the company. Well, let's take a look at it now. Now we have 10,000 in total. Notice A owns now 80% and B owns 20%. Well, under those circumstances, would A qualify for Section 351 for the property that A transferred? And the answer is yes. Well, it's only 2,000 shares, but it doesn't matter. This 2,000 shares gave A, because it's a transaction, gave A control after the contribution. Therefore, Section 350, 351 would apply. So notice here, only they received 2,000 shares. Section 351 applies. In the previous example, 
In the previous example, they also contributed 2,000 shares. Let me go back to the previous example here, example three. Actually, they contributed more. They got 4,000 shares and section 351 did not apply. So here, did not apply, although A received 4,000 shares. In this example, they only contributed 2,000 shares, but as a result, they got control. So the key is, do you have control after the contribution? This is the point that I'm trying to make. If you have control after the contribution, then Section 351 will apply. And how do you know you have control? You would look at the transaction. That, that transaction, either by yourself or as a group, gave you control of the corporation. And hopefully, you got it. So remember, an example, in, in Scenario 1, let's go back to each scenario and kind of review them real quick. It's worth it. Let's go back to scenario one. So scenario one, there was no one got control. Okay, A contributed, received 7,000 shares, but A did not have control. In scenario B, since they, they went together and each received, each received 2,000 shares and each got 50%, but we treated the transaction together because the transfer happened together, then section 351 applies. In example three, no control because A did not, after the transaction, they did not uh, uh, gain control of the corporation. And in four, they did get, have control of the corporation. Let's take a look at this last example to see how this all fits together in an actual, uh, in, a, in an actual example with numbers. We have L, J, and C. So we have L, J, and C. Incorporate the respective businesses and form Starling Corporation on March 1st of the current year, L exchanged property basis of 50,000. So L, we have a basis of 50,000 and value of 150, fair market value of 150. This is gonna give L $100,000 of tentative gain. And they received 150 shares. This is 150 shares. On April the 15th, notice, notice this happened March 1st, this happened March, April the 15th. We're going to assume that those time period are close enough, so they qualify. Jay exchanged uh, his property basis of 70 uh, with a fair market value of half a million. So we have here $430,000 of gain in exchange for 500 shares, 500 shares. J exchanges, okay, we did J on May 10th. Again, we're going to consider March 1st, April 15th, and May 10th. Close enough that we consider all together. C transferred his property basis of 90,000. This is the basis with a value of 350. And that's going to give us a gain, if my math is right, of 240,000. Or is it 260,000? 260,000 of gain. And as a result, received 350 shares. If three exchanges are part of a if the three exchanges are a part of a pre-arranged plan, so pre-arranged plan means it's a one transaction. They all look at this as one transaction. What gain will each party recognize? Well, guess what? If this is considered one transaction, they tech, they own 100% of the company because we're going to look at them all together. And if they own 100% of the company, 100% obviously is more than 80%. Therefore, guess what? This is considered Section 351 and none of the gain is recognized. None of the gain is recognized. Assume that L and J exchanged their property for stocks four years ago. So L and J, we're going to put those together, L and J, um, while C transferred his property for 350 shares in the current year. Clyde's transfer is not part of a prearranged plan with L and J to incorporate. What gain will Clyde recognize? Well, what we're saying here, what we're saying here is this. Let's assume those two individuals, uh, what they did, they contributed the shares they contributed, they contributed the money and they received the shares four years ago. And now C came in, C came in and contributed a 350 shares, uh, contributed the property and received 300, 350 shares. So let's see what happened to C status after this transaction. Well, if we take 150 plus 500 plus 350, the total shares is 1,000. C, share, C shares of ownership is 350 over 1,000, which is 35%. Guess what? Under those circumstances, this whole 260 
for C will be a taxable because it doesn't qualify for section 351. Why it doesn't qualify for section 351? Because after the exchange, C got 35% ownership. Therefore, that's not section 351, okay? Returning to the original facts, if the property that C contributed has a basis of 490, so here what we're saying is C has a basis of, we're going back now, that they're, they're all together, basis of 490 instead of 90, how might the parties otherwise stru structure the transaction? Well, if you really think about it, if C has a basis of 490 and a fair market value of 350, what does that mean? It means C has a loss. C has a loss, not a gain, right? Which is 490 versus 350, uh, 450, what's that? I can't do the math now, uh, 100, and 40,000, okay? So they have a loss of 100 and, yes, 140,000, uh, 140,000, that's a loss. So what would we, okay, uh, how would we, um, how would we advise them to structure this transaction? Well, guess what? I think C should stay out of this transaction. So if L and J wants to form the corporation, they should do it together and see what, should C do, C should sell, basically sell it in a regular exchange, sell the transaction to a third party and recognize a loss of, of recognize a loss of 140, okay? Then, then if they want to contribute money, that's different to the property, but this way you can get the loss, you can, you can recognize the loss, okay? And don't be involved in the transaction, don't be involved in the prearranged transaction. So basically, don't go into the transaction with them because you have a loss and what should you do with your loss? Recognize your loss, sell it separately. This is the advice that you would give this individual. So basically this is section 351, basically an introduction to section 351. We're gonna be adding more complication to this. We're gonna be adding what happened if we have liabilities involved, what happened if we have, um, what happened if we contribute services, what happened if we have built in losses, so on and so forth. If you have any questions, any comments, email me. If you happen to visit my website for additional lectures, please consider donating. If you're studying for your CPA exam, as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.